going on everybody welcome back to the channel this video i'm really excited to make so we're going to be installing my new hummingbird helix 7 on my ascend 128t kayak now for this it's going to be a pretty simple install and we'll get into that a little bit later um there's a few reasons why i went with the hummingbird helix 7 versus like say like a larance or a garmin um one reason is the picture quality that you get with this unit is, is pretty amazing. Uh, I'm not saying that other brands are bad, um, but this one I really like. And then this has the auto chart live. Now for me, that's huge for like, especially where I live, there's hardly any mapping on these lakes where I live in Northern Utah. Um, so having this on my kayak while I'm paddling around, I can be able to save that info see the contour line see points see little islands where i fish that's going to be it's going to be huge for me in the past i just ran this is a basic larange hdi 5 i believe just had some mapping um nothing great it had just your regular sonar down imaging and it worked for a while but i sold that unit and finally picked up this bad boy right here now i did go to yak attack and, and i did get their their helix fish finder mount to put on here um got that in the past i ran oh what was it scotty mount nothing wrong with scotty mounts their transducer mount that they have uh, i think i got it right here This is the transducer mount that they I had from Scotty Mount. Didn't have really issues with it. I wanted to try something different, so I did get the Yak Attack. Let's see, I don't know if you can see that. Switchblade. I'm excited to run this, something new. So this is gonna be gonna be cool. Now, a couple of things on the table that I'm gonna use, say to power it. Um, set this to the side. I do have this Yak Power battery box. It has a port that I plug in for my power for the kayak. Now on my kayak, I do have the Yak Power installed. So installing this unit is gonna be a breeze. It's gonna take like 10 minutes at the most. Um, especially being that I had a kayak, I'm a, I had a fish finder on it before so I already have everything pretty much set up for the most part now on this in here I'm running I believe two 9 amp hour 12 volt batteries with the old unit the Lowrance unit I was running I had one battery in here and it was no issue at all but now I have two because I'm assuming this thing's gonna suck up more juice and to plug it in I do have this adapter so with your power wire I'm gonna solder it to this and then it comes with heat shrink in here so you can heat shrink them together um, and then don't forget about your inline fuse to protect your investment because I mean this thing was not not cheap I think it was like $7.99 I got it for at Cabela's. So I do have this already installed inside the kayak. I will just make sure I have the right size fuse needed for this unit. Now, on my Ascend 128T, it does have a rail system on both sides of it. And when we get upstairs, I'll, I'll show you guys the kayak. Um, I'm not real big on the rail system that comes with it. I kind of had some issues with the Scotty Bounce of wanting to pop off. And so a buddy of mine actually had some of these Scotty Mount rails laying around. So when I'm going to install this, I'm gonna get everything hooked up on the rail system that I have. And then I'm gonna see if I need to use this. So I have this big one 
and then I have a smaller one as well that was given to me. And when you're screwing into your kayak, obviously make sure you have some some goop to put in there to make it make it watertight. Now that should be everything as far as parts. I say we get everything upstairs to the garage and get installed and see how everything looks. All right, we're here in the garage. We've got the kayak on the saw horses. So like I was saying earlier, here's for those who don't own one of these. So here's the rails that come with them. We have one on each side. Um, for now, I'm gonna try these and see how I like them. I might put the transducer on that side and then put the unit on this side, kind of even it out. Um, and then take it out and see how I like it before I start putting different rails on here. So let's jump in and get this installed. One thing I want to point out with this Yak Power plug, it does come with its own butt splice to crimp the cables together and heat shrink. So what I went ahead and did was got this waterproof butt splice. Uh, so it's basically you just crimp it and it's a heat shrink all in one. And then I'm gonna double up with the heat shrink that comes with the plug as well. Now, my last unit, I ran to this plug up here and just ran it back to the unit. I'll probably just do the same thing. It seemed to work well last time, so I'm not gonna change anything. So let's get all this stuff unboxed and get going. Here we are. Here's the transducer mount. Still have some plastic on there. As you can see, it's warped a little bit, so I ended up mounting it here, right here in the center. Which I'm glad I had those. Uh, when I had it over there on the side, it was sitting off to the side all cockeyed, and I, it drove me crazy. So here's how I have the cable brand just looped up right here for now. I think that's probably where I'll leave them. But the install turned out real nice. I'm excited to use it. So I powered it on, made sure everything worked, installed the correct fuse down inside. And now all there is to do is take it out to the water and set it up and try it out. I'm excited. Appreciate you watching and uh, catch you out on the water.